Nestled along the stunning Solway Firth in southern Scotland, Sandy Hills is a place of breathtaking beauty and tranquil peace. Stretching from Portling Bay to Corkabush, this hidden gem offers miles of gold and sandy beaches, dramatic cliffs and sweeping coastal views that seem to go on forever. A popular camping and holiday destination, Sandy Hills is the perfect escape for nature lovers, with its enchanting wildlife and bird sanctuary teeming with life. Towering in the background is the mighty Criffle Pluton, a reminder of the area's ancient volcanic past. But Sandy Hills is more than just a picturesque retreat, it's a place steeped in history, where the whispers of the past mingle with the sounds of the sea. Whether you're exploring its rugged coastline, relaxing on its pristine beaches, or simply soaking in the serenity, Sandy Hills is a true haven for the soul. But beneath the serene beauty of Sandy Hills and the Southwick coast lies a deep, dark secret, one that's been hidden for millions of years. Over the next few videos, we'll uncover the radioactive mysteries that make this stunning landscape one of the most unique and surprising places in the United Kingdom. To understand the significance of Sandy Hills, let's start with the bigger picture. Here we see South Scotland and Northern England, a region rich in history, geology and natural beauty. Nestled along the Solway Firth, this area is where land and sea meet in spectacular fashion. Now let's focus on the Solway Firth, a stunning estuary that separates Scotland and England. To the east we have Carlisle and to the west Dumfries, but it's the coastline in between particularly the Southwick coast that holds the key to our story. Finally, let's zoom in on the Southwick coast. Right here you'll find Sandy Hills and also note the Criffle Pluton, an important player in our story. Over the next few videos, we'll explore this two and a half mile stretch of coastline, uncovering its radioactive mysteries and geological wonders. From the golden sands of Sandy Hills Bay, to the beaches of Douglas Hall, and to the dramatic cliffs of the Needle's Eye, this is a journey you won't want to miss. So why are we creating a video about the Southwick coast? Well, although it may be unbeknownst to the wider public, this stunning part of the world has been subject to intense scientific study since the 1950s. And why is that? Well, that's one word and it's uranium. Uranium is what we're hunting for on this channel and we won't leave any rock unturned until we find it. After sifting through dozens of reports, academic papers and nuclear industry analysis, we believe we've uncovered one of the most naturally radioactive places in the UK. Each paper reveals a different angle, a piece of the puzzle if you will, painting a complex and fascinating story of how natural processes have concentrated uranium here. From geology to geography to mining, environmental science and even biology, Every field plays a part in the tantalising prospect of finding uranium hidden here in southwest Scotland. But why would there be uranium here in the first place? What makes the Sandy Hills Needles Eye and this coastline so special? That's exactly what we're about to explore. Let's dive into the geological story of this incredible place and uncover the secrets behind its surface. Five hundred million years ago, Great Britain and Ireland did not look like they look today. They were two separate land masses. The northern part contained Scotland and Northern Ireland. The southern part contained England and Southern Ireland. A vast ocean called the Iapetus separated the two land masses, called Laurentia and Avalonia. The Kirk Cubbright Dalbeti district, which includes the Southwick coast, was submerged under the Iapetus. This area was a vast submarine fan where sand and silt were deposited on the floor of the ancient ocean during the Silurian period. 
These sedimentary rocks, mainly whack, sandstones and shales, were laid down in a trough or basin. 400 million years ago, the collision of Laurentia and Avalonia continent closed the ocean basin. The sedimentary rocks were folded and thrust beneath the edge of Laurentia, squeezing and stacking rock layers, overlapping each other. As the continents collided, magma intruded, pushed up into the older rocks, forming the Criffel Pluton, a sort of underground volcano. The intrusion of the Criffel into Silurian sedimentary rocks caused the surrounding rocks to be locally Hornsfelsed, meaning the metamorphic alteration of rocks due to high temperature. The intrusion and subsequent tectonic activity resulted in the creation of faults, fissures and cracks in the rocks. The North Solway Fault was formed from the reopening of a pre-existing weakness in the older rocks. Felsite dikes, sheets of volcanic rock, were positioned early in the structural rock building sequence. Some of the original sedimentary rocks were folded and deformed to be near vertical. The rock forming events observed on the Southwick coast were not isolated, but rather represent a broader regional phenomenon extending across South Scotland and into Northern England. The Cheviot Hills, featured in a previous video, are one such example. Hydrothermal fluids, rich in various elements, migrated through the fractured rocks. They especially migrated to areas on the edge of the Pluton intrusion, where there were many fractures in the rock. Hydrothermals are superheated water from deep underground, heated by the action of the magma and friction from colliding rocks. The hydrothermal fluids that flowed into the cracks and fissures were rich in uranium and other elements such as copper, bismuth, cobalt and nickel. These metals came from a combination of sources, the hydrothermals concentrating them and bringing them to near the surface. As the hydrothermal fluids cooled, uranium bearing minerals, primarily pitchblende, or the more modern name of uraninite, were deposited in the cracks and fissures. The uraninite from the veins has been dated as deposited 185 million years ago. This mineralization occurred in the contact zones between the Pluton and the surrounding rocks, especially at the Felsit dikes between 10 and 30 meters north of the North Solway Fault. Uranium was separated from other metals due to a process called fractional crystallization. Over time, the sea, wind and weather eroded the cliff face, exposing the mineral veins containing uranium. The needle's eye itself is a natural arch formed by coastal erosion of an ancient cliff. The coastal environment contributes to the ongoing weathering and redistribution of uranium from these veins. So the science is certainly pointing us in the right direction, the smoking gun of uranium minerals is there. We've got all the maps, surveys and papers we could ever need. But what's missing? Well, a video or guide like this. At the time of publication, I couldn't find a single video, blog post, social media post or anything about uranium at Sandy Hills or the wider area, save for an 18 second clip of an anonymous looking cave. It's time to change that. Over the next few videos, we'll explore this stunning coastline uncover its radioactive secrets and hope to create the definitive guide to uranium in Sandy Hills and the Southwick coast. Let's dive in and see what we can find. During our quest to uncover the radioactive secrets of the Southwick coast, we made Sandy Hills Bay Holiday Park, our base camp, and it turned out to be the perfect launch pad for our adventure. We stayed in one of their cosy glamping pods, sharing our space with Bert the Hedgehog, who seemed just as curious about our mission as we were. The park itself is teeming with wildlife, rabbits hopping around the caravans, birds filling the skies, and it's a constant reminder that we're not just here for the rocks, we're part of a bigger living ecosystem. But let's not forget why we're here, uranium. The hunt for spicy rocks is what drives us and Sandy Hills Bay is ground zero for this adventure. The Solway Firth with its dangerous tides and quick sand like mud flats adds an element of unpredictability that keeps us on our toes. 
It's a place where beauty and danger go hand in hand, and where every rock could hold a clue to the radioactive mysteries we're chasing. While Sandy Hills Bay is the heart of our exploration, the surrounding coastline is equally fascinating. To the west there's Douglas Hall, Portling Bay and Brandy Cove, while to the east you'll find Poe Braidburn, Marbury Cove and the Merzhead Nature Reserve. Most of these spots are accessible on foot, but the A710 just outside the campsite entrance made it easy for us to venture further afield. One of the biggest confusions about the Southwick coast is that there's not one needle's eye, but two or even three. With six needle eyes across Scotland, it's easy to get mixed up, so let's clear things up. First, the needle's eye west of Sandy Hills Bay a stunning natural rock arch on the beach next to Piper's Cove and its companion Needles Eye Cave. This is the one you'll find on Google Maps. Next, the other Needles Eye, east of Sandy Hills Bay, nestled in Huff Wood, 100 metres inland. It's a gateway to Merzhead Nature Reserve and the beach, and the one most studied in scientific papers. Finally, there's a third Needles Eye at Brandy Cove, west of Sandy Hills Bay. Confusing? Absolutely, but each has its own radioactive story to tell. Let's uncover their secrets. Our journey begins at Sandy Hills Campsite, our base camp for this radioactive adventure. From here we head past Burt's Bench and down to Saltpan Rocks and Fisher's Seat, where the coastline starts to reveal its secrets. Following the beach west, we reach Piper's Cove, where legend has it a ghostly piper still plays his haunting tune. Next we explore the stunning Needle's Eye and its mysterious cave, before finishing this leg at Brandy Cove and Portling Bay. But the adventure doesn't stop there. We head back up to park near Nether Clifton, then follow the path through to the other Needle's Eye, crossing the marshes to the magnificent stone pillar of Lot's Wife and the breathtaking Mare Braid's Waterfall. From there, we follow the beach east as far as we can, passing Marbury Cove and beyond. Finally, we reach the star of the show, the Needle's Eye. Armed with papers, studies and maps, we hunt for the spooky caves, radioactive veins and mines said to lie hidden in the peat bogs beyond. This is where the real adventure begins. Join us for the next video where we explore the entire Southwick coast. Was all the research worth it? Do we have the skills to find the uranium? Or will we end up chasing rabbits instead of radioactive rocks? Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next episode. Until then, keep exploring, stay curious and remember to chase the glow. See you next time.